Hello guys, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be talking about electrical circuits, in particular series and parallel circuits and Kirchhoff's second law. Now since we're talking about the second law, it'd be very, very useful to see if we can remember Kirchhoff's first law. So let's go over it really quick. So Kirchhoff's first law states that the sum of the currents entering a junction equals the sum of the currents exiting a junction. Mathematically, we can write this as the sum of the currents, subscript in, is equal to the sum of the currents, subscript out. And this law is a statement of the conservation of charge. This is pretty natural because the definition of current is the rate of flow of charge. In other words, I is equal to delta Q over delta T. So this law is really telling us that in a circuit, charge does not miracul miraculously appear or is uh, never miraculously lost. This can be visualized in this circuit over here. So for instance, if we had five amps and two amps going into a junction, there will be seven amps exiting the junction. Kirchhoff's second law, on the other hand, states that the sum of the EMFs in a circuit equals the sum of the PDs around a closed loop. And this law is a statement of the conservation of energy, which is really important. Now, what does that actually mean? Imagine that we have a little simple circuit in which we have a cell with an EMF of 6 volts. This is connected to two resistors and let's say we've taken a voltmeter we've measured that the pd around this resistor over here is four volts what will the pd around the other resistor actually be well kirchhoff's second law tells us that the sum of the emfs which is six volts will equal the sum of the pds so this will be four plus something else, which of course is going to be two volts. So this will be equal to six volts as well. So the PD around here will be two volts. What Kirchhoff's second law is actually telling us is that the energy that we put into the circuit, i.e. the EMF, has got to equal the energy that is released from the circuit, i.e. the PD. In other words, remember, EMF is simply energy that's been transferred from other sources, such as chemical, for instance, to electrical energy per unit charge, and uh, PD is equal to the energy that's gone from electrical to other sources per unit charge. And those two will have to equal one another, of course, in the absence of internal resistance. The circuit which we looked at just before is an example of a series circuit. Now, what exactly is a series circuit? In such a circuit, the electricity has only one path to follow. For instance, the electrons, when they move from the negative terminal, you can see that they only have a single path to follow throughout this circuit. There are no junctions and there's nowhere for the electricity to go but along the wire. So due to Kirchhoff's first law, this means the current will be the same at every point in the circuit, depending on the resistance of those two resistors. And because there are no junctions, no, there are no points or no places for the electricity to either leave or enter the circuit. Additionally, due to Kirchhoff's second law, the EMFs will be shared across the components because the sum of the EMFs is going to equal the sum of the PDs. Now, the first example that we looked at for Kirchhoff's second law was relatively simple. We only had one source of uh, EMF and a couple of components, so 6 is obviously going to equal 4 plus 2. Let's have a look at a slightly harder examples in which we have more than one example of um, or one more than one source of emf so why don't you guys pause this video and see whether you can tell me 
what are the values of the PD across those two resistors. Okay, well, let's have a good look at those two circuits, starting up with the first one over here. So Kirchhoff's second law tells us that the sum of the EMFs is going to equal the sum of the PDs. Now, the sum of the EMFs in this case is going to be 6 volts plus 3 volts, so that's going to be 9 volts in total, and those are going to equal the sum of the PDs, so it's going to be 4 volts plus something else, and we can see that that something else is going to be 5 volts, like so. So this means that the first PD will be equal to 5 volts. Notice that in our second example, our cell has been switched around. So here negative is connected to positive, whereas here negative is connected to negative. So our cell, our second cell, will no longer be 3 volts, but will be minus 3 volts. So applying Kirchhoff's second law, our sum of the EMS will no longer be 6 plus 3, but it will be 6 volts minus 3. 3 volts and this will equal 1 volt plus some unknown quantity and this will mean that 3 volts will be 1 volt plus the unknown will have to be 2 volts. So this means that the PD across our second resistor will be equal to 2 volts. Finally let's have a look at parallel circuits. A parallel circuit has junctions and hence more than one possible path for the electricity to flow. For instance, if we have 5 amps going this way, at this junction the electricity could either go down or it could go to the right. So this means that in this particular circuit, if we have 2 amps going to the right, then we should have 3 amps going over down and across this branch of the circuit. Kirchhoff's second law applies separately for each loop. So in every closed loop, the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the PDs. So in this first loop, you can kind of think of it as its own separate circuit. There is essentially only one source of PD and one source of EMF. So this means that the PD across the resistor will be equal to 6 volts. Very similarly, the second branch will have its PD equal to the, or the sum of the PDs will equal the sum of the EMFs. So across the second branch, should we just write this down? Across the second branch. By the second branch, I mean the one with the resistor and the light bulb. The sum of the EMFs is going to equal the sum of the PDs. Now the sum of the EMFs will be just 6 volts because the uh, 6 volt EMF still applies to this branch over here. And this will equal to the potential difference across the resistor which is 3 volts plus the voltage across the bulb. So we can clearly see that the voltage across the bulb will be equal to 3 volts. Hey folks, so this was a little video just summarizing Kirchhoff's laws and applying them to various series and parallel circuits. Hopefully this makes sense and uh, thank you very much for watching guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video.